in the previous videos we learned the unit 1 2 and 3 briefly in these units we discussed about 8085 microprocessor and 8051 microcontrollers briefly next comes the unit 4 peripheral interfacing just to take a look at this slide it shows the agenda of this unit first of all we are going to learn about why are peripheral devices needed? What are the peripheral devices available? That is 8255, 8259, 8254 and 8279. Okay. And we are going to discuss about the architecture, configuration and interfacing with ICs. In addition with A2D converter and D2A converter with the interfacing circuit using 8085 and 8051 microcontroller. Let's see one by one. The first one is 8255 programmable peripheral interface. So first of what is called interfacing? Actually, the microprocessor is to be connected to the outside environment to input devices, output devices, memories, etc. In many cases, it may not be possible to connect the external devices directly to the microprocessor. So, designing logic sectors, designing logic sectors and writing instructions to enable the microprocessor to communicate with these peripherals is called as interfacing. Okay, so the logic sectors are called I.O. ports or interfacing devices. There are large number of interfacing devices available in the market. A few of the interfaces manufactured by Intel Corporation are discussed here. The first one is 8255 PPI Programmable Peripheral Interface. Actually, the Intel 8255 is a general purpose programmable I.O. device designed to perform a variety of input or output functions in a microprocessor system. Okay, so it is here 40 pin DIP IC. Already you know what is DIP. So dual inline package. So it is a 40 pin DIP IC operating on plus 5 volt power supply. The 8255 interfaces the microprocessor on one side with the peripherals on other side. A255 interfaces the microprocessor on one side with the peripherals on the other side. So this figure shows the signal configuration of A255. It has three ports, port A, port B and port C. Port A and port B are two A-bit parallel I.O. ports. The 8 bits of port C can be divided into two individual bits or be grouped into two 4 bit ports. One is port C upper, that is PCU. Another one, port C lower, that is PCL. Or one 8 bit port called port C. So this is about signal configuration of 8255 PPI. The next diagram shows the functional block diagram of 8255. It has two 8-bit ports that is port A and port B. Two 4-bit ports, port C upper and port C lower. These two are 4-bit ports. Okay, then data bus buffer, then control logic. Okay. For the purpose of programming, these ports are grouped as follows. That is, group A, it contains port A, that is PA0 to PA7, in addition with port C upper, okay. that is PC4 to PC7. Okay, so, group A consists of port A and port C upper. Okay, port A is nothing but PA0 to PA7. 
seven line. In addition, where PC four to PC seven line. So this is under group A. Then group B consists of fourth B and fourth C lawyer. Fourth B that is PB zero to PB seven. Then fourth C lawyer. PC zero to PC three. So A to phi phi has two A bit parallel ports. Four A and four B and two four bit ports. That is four C upper and four C lower. In addition, with data bus buffer and free drive control logic. For the purpose of programming, these ports are grouped as like. Group A is nothing but port A and port C upper. Here the signal lines are P A zero to P A seven, then P C four to P C seven. Then group B consists of port B and port C lower. The signal lines are P B zero to P B seven, then P C zero to P C three. Can see the second block control logic. So the control logic has six line. First one read signal. Second one write signal. Third one reset signal. Fourth one C S signal. Then fifth one A zero and last one is A one. Let us see one by one. Get the first signal. That is read signal. When this line is low, the microprocessor reads data from a selected I/O port of the A255. So that is the function of read signal. Then second signal, that is write signal. When this line is low, the microprocessor writes into a selected I/O port or control register. Then third signal, that is reset signal. When this line goes high, the control register is cleared and all the ports are initialized as input ports in the mode zero configuration. Then four, five, and six, that is C A signal A one, C A signal. A one and A zero. The C S signal is nothing but chip select signal connected to a decoded address. The lines A one and A zero specify one of the I O ports or control register as noted here. See here, C S A one and A zero. If all the values are zero, then port A is selected. Then zero zero one in the condition port B is selected. Zero one zero port C is selected. Zero one one control register is selected. One A one and A A not value whatever may be A two five five is not selected. Okay, if the control that is a chip select signal goes high means the A two five five is not selected. Chip select signal active or slow, then only the A two five five is selected for interfacing. Then control word. So actually, the control section has an eight bit register called control register. The binary word written into this register is called control word. The control word bits. Specify I/O functions for each each port. Okay, then these are the operating modes of A255. The operation of A255 can be classified according to two modes: the bit set or reset, that is BSR mode and I/O mode. Okay, the BSR mode is used. To set or reset bits in port C. 
then i more mode is further divided into three modes mode 0 mode 1 mode 2 the name of the mode 0 is basic input or output mode then mode 1 name is stroked input or output mode then mode 2 bidirectional data bus let's see one by one so the first one that is mode 0 so in this mode all ports function as simple input or output ports port a port b port c upper and port c lower can be used individually either as input port or as output port in 16 different combinations if your port is in port 0 data can be written into the port or read from the port without any control signals when your port act as an output port in mode 0 any data written into the port is latched if the port act as an input port the data written into it is only buffered but not latched okay so this is the mode 0 configuration okay, here port a act as output port port b act as output and port c that is upper port and lower port act as input other one output uh, so a255 in mode 0 configuration can be used usually either input port or output port in 16 different combinations. So this is a mode 0 function. Then mode 1. This is known as strobed input or output mode. Only port A and B can be programmed to operate in this mode. When a port is in mode 1, data transfer to or from this port takes place using certain control signals through port C. So, port A and port B can be used either input port or output port. But port C can be used for control signals for port A and port B operation. See here the first diagram. This is port 1 input port C, port A that is the arrow mark that is inside. So, this is actor input port. Similarly, port B also the arrow mark indicates inside. So, this is also input port. So, port A and port B act as input port. The remaining signals that is port C, port C signal. Control signal for port A and port B operation. Okay, then see here PC3 to PC5, PC3 to PC5, PC3, PC4, and PC5. Control signal for port A operation. Okay, so these three signals are used for control signals for port A operation. Okay, then PC0, PC1, and PC2. Okay, these three signals act as control signal for port B operation. Okay, then PC6 and PC7 not used can be used in port 0 that is simple IO mode. So this is input in mode 1. Okay, similarly, mode 1 output. See the arrow mark comes outside. So port A and port B. Both are act as output. Okay, then port C act as control signal for port A and port B. Okay, so here PC3, PC6, and PC7 are control signals of port A. Then PC0, PC1, and PC2 for control signals of port B. Okay, then PC4 and PC5 not used can be used in mode 0 operation that is simple IO mode. Port A 
and code B can be individually used as input or output in mode 1 for a wide variety of stored I.O. application. Okay. It is possible to use code A in mode 1 and code B in mode 0 or vice versa. So, this is about mode 1 configuration. The next one is mode 2. So, this is known as stroke bidirectional bus input or output mode. Bidirectional bus input or output mode. Only code A can be used in this mode. Okay, code A can be used in this mode for bidirectional data transfer between microprocessor and peripheral devices. PC3 to PC7 server control signal for data transfer in this board. Okay, PC3 to PC3 to PC7. PC3 to PC7. That is a PC3, PC4, PC5, PC6 and PC7. Access control signal for port A operation. Okay, port B can be used in port 0 or port 1 as an input or output port. Okay, so, this port, that is port B, cannot be used in port 2. This port can be used either port 0 or port 1 operation. Okay, then the remaining lines, that is PC0, PC1 and PC2. So, these three signals may be used in port 0 configuration, may be either input port or output port. Okay. So, here see port 0, that is PC0, PC1, PC2 may be used in either input port or output port. Then port 1, okay, that is port B. So, can be used in mode 1 operation. So, here in mode 2, in the case of mode 2, only port, that is port A, only used in mode 2 operation. These signals are the control signals for port A. Then, here, OBF is nothing but output buffer. So, this is acknowledgement signal. This is strobed signal, this is input buffer, this is INTR, interrupt request signal. So, here A specifies control signal for port A operation. See the pre previous diagram, one is a strobed signal, another one input buffer, another one interrupt signal. So, here A specifies control signal for port A operation, here B specifies control signal for port B operation. That is a stroke signal, input buffer, and INT. Similarly, here in this diagram, A specifies control signal for port A operation, B specifies control signal for port B operation. So, this is output buffer, acknowledgement signal, interrupt signal. So, this is also output buffer, acknowledgement, and interrupt signal. So, this is the control word format of A255. In I.O. mode, actually already you know, the control section has an 8-bit register called the control register. The binary word written into this register is called control word. The control word will specify the I.O. function for each port. Okay, so, it is a 8-bit register. Okay, that is D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. This is D7. C, D0 specifies port C lower if the bit value is equal to 1, that means port C act as input port. If the bit value is equal to 0, means that time the port C act as output port. Okay, then D1 specifies port B operation. Okay, if the bit value is equal to 1, means input port. If the bit value is equal to 0, means this is output port. Okay, then D2 specifies mode selection, mode 0 or mode 1. If the bit value is 0 means mode 0. If the bit value is equal to 1 means mode 1. 
okay then c3 bit specifies port c upper if the bit value is equal to 1 means that is input port port c upper act as input port suppose bit value 0 means port c upper act as output port okay then d5 and d6 specifies port selection both bits that is d6 and d5 both values are 0 0 means node 0 is selected so node 0 is nothing but basic input or output port then 0 1 specifies node 1 is selected so node 1 is nothing but showed input or output port 1 x x value may be 0 or 1 okay that time node 2 is selected Mode 2 is nothing but bidirectional data bus. Then the last bit that is D7th bit. If D7th bit is active means, so that is a mode set plan. Okay, that is a BSR mode. Okay, so BSR mode is nothing but in this mode, individual bits of port C can be controlled directly by the microprocessor. Using this bit, set a reset feature, the microprocessor can send a command to the 8255 for setting or resetting any one of the 8 bits of port C. If bit 7, that is if the control word bit 7 is equal to 0 means port C operates in BSR mode. The BSR control word does not affect the IO function of port A and port B. So this is the control word format which defines the IO functions for each port as shown here. Then the programming of A255 that is to communicate with the peripheral to A255, three steps are necessary. Step number one is first to determine the port address. Okay, port A, port B, and port C, and the control register according to chip select logic and the address lines A1 and A2. Okay, so this is the first step. So, first step is determine the address of ports A, B, and C, and the control register according to the chip select logic and address lines A1 and A2. Then, second step. Form the control word according to the desired board and write the word in the control register. Okay, so this is step number two. The third one is write IO instructions to communicate with the peripherals to these ports. So these are the three steps needed to communicate with the peripheral to A255. Already I told so port A and port B. In mode 0, that is basic IO mode. So, port C can also be used either input port or output port. In case of mode 1, port A and port B can be used either input port or output port. Then, port C acts as control signals. Okay, so see here. The first that is a PC3, PC4, and PC5 control signal for port A, then PC0, PC1, PC2 for port B operation. These two signals may be used either input port or output port. Then mode 1, port A and port B in mode 1, output port. So here PC3 acts as input signal. Then PC6 act as acknowledgement signal and PC7 act as output buffer. Then PC0 act as intra signal for port B operation. Then PC1 output buffer. Then PC2 act as control signal. Here PC4 and PC5 may be used either input port or output port in mode 0 operation. Okay, then port A in mode 2, okay, that is port B in mode 0. So here PC0, PC1 and PC2 may be used either input port or output port in mode 0 operation. The remaining 
lines that is PC3 to PC7 act as control signal for OTA operation in output. Okay, so, IO is nothing but input or, or output line. STB means show, input buffer full, then interrupt request signal. So, this is output buffer full. ACK means acknowledgement signal. Then, subscriptor. Okay, here, subscript A means a port A control signal. Subscript B indicates a port B control signal. So, port A and port B can be programmed independently in any possible modes, either as input port or output port. In this video, we have learned a lot about what is interfacing, what is PTI, okay, that is programmable peripheral interface. Then functional building blocks of A255, then operating modes of A255 with control work for. See you in the next video. Thank you.